Hey, what's up, guys? Six from Brady here. Nazreddin Nabi, where have you been all my life? Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. You know it's me. The Betray Premiership. I absolutely love the Betray Premiership. You know, it was happening this past weekend. Orlando Pirates won, Chippa won, Cape Town City won. They all won, right? Then there was that game at the Calabash that I went to. Kansas Chiefs going up against Mamelodi Sundowns. Whoa, entertaining game. Né? It had the drama. It had the referee. It had Sundowns winning, coming from behind. And congratulations to them. But I don't want to talk about the winning team. Let's talk about the losing team, Kansas Chiefs. Yep. You guys are thinking I'm probably going to come after them. Né? Not at all. Nabi, man, where have you been? Like... Where has this guy been, guys? This guy, you know, he comes with the realness, even in the press conference, straight shooter, even tells the translator, relax, I got this, even though he's got the broken English, but he's trying. But the one thing I like about it is that he's such a breath of fresh air. We don't have a coach like this in the country, man. We don't have someone who's answering it straight. When they ask him about transfers, he answers. When they ask him about a player, he answers. He doesn't duck dive and all that stuff. And in the past, we had coaches. At Naturena, they would duck dive. They would not answer questions straight. This is what Kaiser Chiefs needs, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is it. This is it. And the reason why I say it is because he was talking about when they conceded, you know, the goals from last season came. You know, the players dropped their heads. They didn't believe they were going to win. And he absolutely was like, I don't like that mentality. This is a big club. He doesn't like losing. And I said, wow. Like, I've not heard this for a while. And maybe it makes sense why this club has gone almost 10 years without winning anything. Because the mentality in that club was gone. But now, they found the Tunisian with elite mentality. And I tell you something, I've seen enough. I've seen enough, guys, to say this team will probably finish in the top five. Yep. I think so. This season, I think this team will probably finish in the top five. And the reason why I say this is because... It was the first time I watched the Chiefs game in a very long time where I saw players who knew what they were doing, who knew where this one had to be here. This one must press like this. That one must defend like that. That one must make the runs outside. I had never seen a team that knows what they're doing in a very long time. And I have to say, Kansas Chiefs management, I spoke about the fans. You know, the fans, you got to be there, play your role, do your part. Players too, Nabi too. But Kansas Chiefs management, I'm asking you nicely, guys. Even if this guy doesn't win anything, Kale Copella, please leave him alone. Just leave him. Let him be there. Don't try to take him out. Please do not do that because I tell you something, man. If you keep this guy at Kansas Chiefs, I can tell you right now, success is not far away. On playing the field with six, we only deal with the top of the top guests, guys. And today, I have a very, very, when we say top, it's, it's there. TS Galaxy, Cheaper United, and a man who's won CAF Champions League and the league with Mamluk Sundowns. And when I say the face of Bloemfontein Celtic, I say Tawan Tete is here. Yep. And guess what he told me? He said Stellenbosch is going to win the MT8 final. Another guest on playing the field with Chicks. Now, when you get a chance to speak to a player who has played for TS Galaxy, has played for Chippa United, won the CAF Champions League and the league and with San Mamluri Sundowns, the league being a number of times. And also, when I say the face of Bloemfontein Celtic, guys, I mean, Tabo Tete, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, thanks, man. And uh, thanks, uh for this opportunity and uh, just want to say a uh, good good actually afternoon to the listeners back home. Oh, an absolute pleasure, man. Tell, tell me something. How is, li how is like life after football treating you, man? I think so far so good. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, though I, I don't play anymore, but I'm still in a football uh, circle where I'm, I'm coaching the under-17, under-21 of uh, Keswick Stars. Mm. Uh, you know, we're looking forward that uh, this season we have to push for us to get a promotion to, to PSL and by then we will definitely have our boys who will be playing for DDC, so we're preparing mm. them for that. So we're going all the way to uh, you know to 
get the promotion this uh, this season. Oh man, it's, it's such a pleasure to still have you around within football, still doing what you gotta do. Tell me something, Tabo. I've always wanted to ask you this. Did you? Because we don't have it anymore in South Africa at this current point. You were almost a one club man up until, of course, Mamelodi announced came through. Yeah. Did you ever think that you know at some point you were going to retire at Bloomfield and Celtic and you are not going to leave? No, it it has been you know with me for for some time before I left Bloomfield and Celtics mm. that uh, that I want to play you know for the uh, biggest teams in in, in South Africa and uh, I just waited. I was just being patient and and saying, Hore, you know, God will guide me because there were there were uh, opportunities for me to leave. Uh, 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 Blue Foot and Celtics back then, but uh, the offer for me, I was not happy with it, mm. and that's why I kept, uh, you know, at Celtics for ten years that I played for, for 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 one team. You know, it doesn't happen more often, mm. but uh, but for me, I was home, I was happy. Uh, chairman took care of me. Uh, with my family, Jimmy Augusti, you know, I just want to say, uh, you know, shout out to uh, my boss. I also saw him last week when we went to Bloomfontein, me and Fabian, mm. uh, through MTN. But uh, I saw him, he's still uh, under development with uh, David Modise. So they're still doing wonders. And then I just hope Bloomfontein Celtics will be back. Now, I, I, I hope that they'll be back too as well. The funny thing is, is that you're such a quality player, you're such a great defender as well. You could have played across the back four as well. And because of your quality, I just wanted to find out why did you choose Sundowns? Because you said the big clubs. I'm pretty sure yeah. the other two big ones were interested as well <laughs> from Soweto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I did uh, get an offer uh, from Parrot, uh, but for me, the offer didn't uh, give me that uh, uh, courage to say uh, I will leave Dunfunten, mm. going to Gauteng, and uh, yeah, the offer didn't go well. Uh, I was not happy, and I think after two seasons, she came. Where I spoke to Bobby, and uh, yeah, also the offer I was not happy with. It was only about the offer, and uh, you know, Mamelodi Sundowns when they came, uh, it, they came. Me knowing because I, a couple of times I spoke to Coach Pizzo while we were still at Bafana Bafana mm. and he wanted me to be part of, 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 of his team. So back then he was still at uh, Bafana and not, not having a team at that time. So immediately when he got that opportunity, that's when I think I went twice uh, for camp uh, while he was uh, at Mamelodi Sundowns, but still helping at uh, Bafana Bafana. But he told me that you know, he wanted to have such player, you know, starting the ball from the back and then me being comfortable. That's what he likes, especially with the uh, defenders. So, so as I, for me as a coach, you know, I think it's high time for me to 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 move because I really wanted to. Uh, have or face the other challenges because I've been in Celtics for, for, for almost ten years. Mm. So, so yeah, the the, the deal happened during uh, the season of 2013-2014. I moved in January, uh, whereby uh, Coach Pizzo, uh, you know, pushed that, and uh, I was happy to move. Uh, so the offer was was much better, and I think uh, I came to the right team. At the right time. So me being patient, not rushing things. And uh, yeah, I think I, I made the right uh, choice. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that the story worked out. But no, the nice thing about it is you have insight. You can give us a little bit of secrets, man. Because you <laughs> came in, you said 2013-2014 season. Yes, yes. And you happened to win the league. You happened to win the CAF Champions League. Yeah. Now we find ourselves with Ravonna Sundowns and Sundowns have now won the last seven leagues in a row. So you basically started the foundation of this winning thing. What is it that Sundowns has that other teams don't have that they can win the league seven times in a row? And especially you've played at other clubs. So what is it Sundowns are doing right in your eyes? For me, uh, the best thing that they do right is to get the right players uh, to be in the team, the mm -hmm. setup of the coach and, and also they give the coach uh, a, a, you know,
know, a, a budget uh, to choose players that he thinks they can do well, they can win cups for Mamelodi Sundowns. And he started with Pizzo, and Pizzo laid a good foundation for the upcoming coaches, you know, coming behind him. As you can see now, Sundowns, they are, they are one of the best in Africa. Mm. So, so, so I think that foundation, uh, Coach Manoba, Coach Rulani was there and they saw they worked very close with uh, Coach Pizzo. And, you know, if someone is doing the right thing, I mean, why, why you change? So, 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 I mean, Rulani came after he left and, you know, Rulani is one, Person, one coach who's young but very dedicated with football, who likes to learn each and every day uh, in the circle of football. So he will always bring new things in football, step ahead of most of coaches as much as he's, he's so young, but he's got a, a strong uh, character as a coach. He knows how to how to manage. Uh, players, but mm. what the chairman did, uh, uh, Patrice uh, Mutsepe back then, while he was still a chairman, I think he was he was uh, supporting the coach of whoever that he wants to mm. to the team, and 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 and, uh, and and so that they can win the team, the the, the 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 championship. But now, of course, we have a new season, a new sponsor as well to the league as well. Uh, tell me something, Mamelodi Sun now this season. When you look at it from what you've seen so far. Do you think they will walk the league again? Because last season they finished 23 points ahead of second place. Do you think it's going to be as comfortable this season? I foresee them winning the league again, but not as uh, comfortable as last season, whereby they won it even before the last game. And uh, for me, I think uh, as much as I played for Memorial Sundowns, but you don't want to see such football and Sundowns, they've been doing that for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. We need, we need uh, teams to challenge them, but I think it won't be easy for them to win the, the league this season. Mm -hmm. But for, for what I'm seeing, they're still going to win the league. Oh man, I, I, I absolutely love the fact that you took a prediction, you went for it. Now, the regarding to Kaiser Chiefs, they played against Mamluri Sanos, they lost, but they were yeah. very competitive over the yeah. past weekend. Now, yeah. the funny thing is, John Committees has spoken about a competing Kaiser Chiefs is going to be a good one for the league. Um, the likes of Team Sukazi have come out and said that a Chiefs that is very strong is good for the league. You've been in around these spaces, you've been in around football. Do you agree with the sentiment that it's it's good that Chiefs must compete. That Chiefs must be trying to win trophies as well. Yo, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, Chiefs they need. I mean, it's been it's been years. Chiefs not winning uh, major trophies, and we know the past years Chiefs were the best in in in, in winning a championship. And uh, I think Chiefs is a big team in Africa. Mm. They need. They belong to where Sundowns is. Uh, with uh, you know the the past seasons where they didn't play well and you know players come and go and the coaches as well, but I think I think this season is much better and I think they must just be consistent in their play uh, or else rather they must just raise the bar and 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 and, and play 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 well and get the results and uh, honestly Chiefs deserve actually to play in Africa. Champions League season in season out because uh, the the I mean the standard of Chiefs also it's 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 high it's high mm. Chiefs is a big team so for for us like I said we need we need more players especially in, in South Africa no very impressive as as you as you mentioned and yeah and with the guys who the Chiefs and them having to do really well tell yeah. me something you are the MTN8 ambassador if I'm correct yes are you enjoying that role. Yeah, we are, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. I'm with other legends. Yeah, so you know, we interact, and others. It's been a while not uh, seeing them, and others. We, you know, after stop playing football, others we don't know what's happening with a certain player and uh, or a former player. So it's good to interact, and uh, you know, the guys are good, and uh, you know, as former uh, players, we 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 quite we get along. Quite nicely, and uh, 
some most of the time they are pairing us into to to go to provinces and and, and stuff like that. So it's yeah, I'm enjoying this uh, ride with the guys and uh, with the other uh, team from from MTN as we now uh, in Newcastle uh, doing the roadshow, the interviews. Also, then tomorrow we'll be in Ulundi and uh, on Wednesday we'll be in Devon, whereby everyone, every legend that side eight of us mm. so because this is the last week uh, of, of the tournament and uh, yeah just saying very excited i'm very happy to see uh, Stellan bosch you know going to the final mm. i think it's going to be an exciting one uh, as you know it's, uh, they're playing against the champions of uh, mtn8 whereby orlando Paris, you know when they play in devon H, most of the time they win here most of the time they so, so uh, we'll see that what Stellenbosch they beat Mamelodi Sundowns here in Moses Mabida last time, the second, the second leg. So, so, so it, it might be uh, their home as well. You know, new boys coming up, and uh, but yeah, it's going to be exciting for everyone actually in football. No, I totally agree with that. Now, tell me something. Tell me, uh, you have, have you won the MTN8? You've won it before, yeah? Yes, yes. Back then. It, was called uh, SA Top Eight. Yes, and you won it yes. with uh, you won it with Celtic as well. Bloomfontein Celtics. Now, Bloomfontein now, Bloomfontein. when when Bloomfontein Celtics, as much as they're a big football club with a big fan base, whenever they go up against the other big sides, they're not necessarily the favorites. Now, in this final, it's not the Sundowns and Pirates that people were hoping to get, but yeah. Stellenbosch has ruined the party yeah. by getting to the final. But now. Yeah. From what from from playing in a team where it was seen as an underdog for a long time, does Stellenbosch stand a chance against Orlando Pirates when you look at it? I I I, I strongly believe so that they have a chance because uh, it 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 plays a part whereby uh, as a team as an underdog you don't have any pressure to play in that uh, top uh, final for top eight, and Orlando Pirates. I mean, everyone expect them to win. Uh, that, but uh, after seeing uh, Stellenbosch, the both games that they played against Mamelodi Sundowns, they went pound to pound. And most teams, when they play um, um, against Mamelodi Sundowns, they sit back, they allow Mamelodi Sundowns to be more on the ball, and that's how they had them. They had most teams if you allow them. So these boys, they were they were pressing them from top. Uh, even the goal that they scored the first round in. Lucas Moripe, they mm. were playing from, they were pressing them from top, whereby Mamelodi Sundowns, you know, they build from from the back, and then they end up getting a penalty, and that's how they won that game. So going to the second second round, they play the same. They never sit back. Or they, we have won, uh, we must just play draw. They went pound to pound with uh, Mamelodi Sundowns, and they end up winning the game again one zero. So I foresee them, you know, uh, 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 spoiling. Uh, the party of Orlando Paris because yeah. Paris they've been winning cups in KZN Moses Mavida to be specific but uh, yeah it don't be easy for them to win that but I think them being underdogs they have a chance and they do have a good squad uh, to take the top eight so I foresee Stellenbosch beating uh, Orlando Paris amazing He's already given us a prediction already, ladies and gentlemen. Prediction it thing. Now, the one thing before I want to wrap it up, just two questions yeah. left. Yeah. Orlando Pirates in another final, Jose could win his fifth trophy in three seasons. Now, he has not won the league yet, but would he, if he was to win it, would you class him as an Orlando Pirates legend if he wins this trophy? He's already, to me, he's already an, 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 a legend uh, in my uh, in my view, Amazing. because I mean, he's, he's done, he's done well, he's done well. So, but yeah, I mean, for him also to go to the final again this season, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing. But to win it, then it will be, it will be cherry on top. Amazing. Now, the last question before I do leave, Talon yeah. Tete, being the captain, you've served this, na- this nation well, you've served PSL well, you've served South African football, everything well. Tell me something. Where is South African football for you right now? <sighs> yeah, I think we went up uh, the past the past two years. If you check our game against uh, Bafana Bafana T 
team mm. that played in a, a cup of nation you know uh, so i think we we for me i'll judge with that because uh, comparing to you know the teams and and the national teams uh, i i foresee with, with playing a quite football a good football and uh, you know having uh, coach Bruce as well uh, I think he's doing well with uh, coach Hellman and Keller as well the, mm. the team and because they attend, they attend local football and and, and, and and also they also still analyzing our players who are playing abroad outside South Africa you know in Africa in Europe as well to see how they, they do so so I, I, I see us playing a much football better football compared to before because even now we're doing a lot of analysis in Bafana. There's a lot of analysis and that's what I think, you know, it can improve a player and also as a coach because, you know, when we, we do mistakes as a coaches, now mm. I'm calling myself coach, not mm. a player. Of course. <laughs> you know, so, so me analyzing, it, 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 it gave me a, a plus in my performance because I will analyze myself after I play the game and I will present uh, the wrongs that I did and the right that I did uh, in front of the team, the players, the technical team, because, you know, Pizzo was emphasizing that because we were rectifying uh, our mistakes before, you know, you were a bit shy to say, coach, I was supposed to do it there, there, there. But the more we did that, uh, that's when uh, we got more results. And, and, and I think... Uh, if more teams do that, and actually by now more teams are doing that, they're analyzing. So opponents before they play them and you mm. analyze yourself, the mistakes that you did and the, the rights also that you did because you want to be a better player or to do less mistakes uh, come the next game. So I think the standard uh, we've left it up and uh, we, we, with everyone, not only the coach, Everyone in the technical team that are doing their best, and 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 it also improves the team, the players uh, to excel. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Talent yeah. Tata, I just want to take this time to say thank you for being a guest and thank you for everything you did for our football man. Let's, you are the you are the people that didn't get the headlines because maybe you did not score the hundred <laughs> goals. Yeah, and yeah, you didn't have the assists. But you yeah. had the clean sheets, you had the leadership, and you had the humility yeah. as well. And we say thank you so much for everything. No, thanks. Thanks, Rutuam. I uh, just want uh, thanks, uh, thanks to say thank you for the opportunity again. Mm. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I think players just to stay humble and, and, and do uh, their business, which is to play football, uh, you know, being disciplined, respecting your job. And I think that's how they can excel and, and stay longer in a professional setup. Mm. Very important. I love that. Please do keep well and take care, yeah? I will, I will. Thanks, man. Sharp, sharp. Thank you. Cheers. Here on this show, we have no fear, no favor. Objective all the way. Players, coaches, we're watching all of you guys. This is Muku of the Week. I spoke about this man over the past weekend and I'm going to speak about him again today because he is the star of the week, the Sundowns front man, Lucas Rivero Costa. Class. Class. I say class because I saw him at Loftus and then I saw him at FNB and he was doing the same things. And when you see him live, he's different, guys. He's different. It's not TV stuff. When you see him live, this guy. And the thing is, I don't want to talk about his goals and assists. It's just the way he moves, the confidence that he has. There's a level of arrogance this player has, man. And I'm just like, nah, that, that, that's the best player in the Betway Premiership. That's straight. And that is the star of the week. The Muhu. Yep. So before the season started, guys, right? These clubs were playing friendlies. We didn't know about them. We had no idea when these clubs were playing friendlies. But they were playing each other in friendlies. And they're going to play again when the international break comes. And then there was a club, Red and Black, Tears Galaxy. They decided to post the one time when they beat Kaiser Chiefs, and proudly so, to a point that even the admin of their social media had to repost that post again because I think he or she was too excited to put it out. So they put it out to say, hey, we beat Kaiser Chiefs just to let everybody know how. 
we never known about these results. But the season has started. The season has started, and let's read out the results of TS Galaxy this season. Number one, three one loss to Stellenbosch, one nil loss to Richards Bay, one nil loss to Super Sport United, and last but not least, two one loss to Chiba United. I think football karma came. Nah, you guys are definitely the Mokos of the week. Placing the right bets on the right games. Win big with shakes from Betty on Bet of the Week. It's time to make money, guys. It's time to make some serious cash. Five games and the odds. You will not believe it. I come with big odds here. Girona going up against Feyenoord in the Champions League. We're going over 2.5 goals. Aston Villa taking on Bayern Munich. Both teams to score, definitely. Liverpool against Bologna. I've got Liverpool straight win at home. They're going to score probably three goals as well. So Liverpool in over 2.5. FK Rigas against Galatasaray in the Europa League. I've got Galatasaray straight win. And then the Europa League, again. This one is not going to do well on uh, my... Um, you know, there's a guy who, like, edits the videos and stuff. He's a big Manchester United fan, and it's not going like to hear this one. FC Porto going up against Manchester United. We've gone with FC Porto win. Or draw, and under 3.5 goals. Hopefully, I make it out of here alive, guys. But the odds, 11 times your money, guys, 11.18. Of course, you want to join me, right? You got to click on the link below. Remember to practice responsible betting at betway.co.za. We've come to the end of the show, guys. Can you believe this, right? Like, the league only comes back on the 25th of October. Mara Piesa, like, what do you expect us to do in that meantime until the 25th of October? Ah, guys, y'all are punishing us, man. But we run this weekend to the MTNA final. Orlando Pirates, Stellenbosch. Hmm. Before you leave, though, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. So you notify for future episodes.